Hello, hope you are doing well. Today I am going to take up a story from NCERT's class 10 supplementary reader. The title of the book is Footprints Without Feet. And the title of the story is also Footprints Without Feet. This is chapter 5. Sometimes referred to as the father of science fiction, Herbert George Wells was an English novelist, teacher, historian and journalist. He was a master of the science fiction and some of his notable works include The Time Machine, The War of the Worlds, The Invisible Man and The Island of Dr. Morrow. His short stories are quite interesting as well written and entertaining as his better known novels. He described the spectacle of space travel decades before men set foot on the moon, a visionary, a man of science with an enduring literary touch. Wells was a widely appreciated author. Some of his works have also been made into movies. H.G. Wells had a humble background. He was the son of domestic workers who then became small shopkeepers. He grew up underserved but found solace in reading. He was a voracious reader and managed to get scholarship to study biology. Wells first published book was actually a textbook of biology 1893. Soon he graduated to writing science fiction. Behind all his writing lay a passionate concern for man and society. The story that we are going to discuss today and I will read it out for you also. Footprints Without Feet is about a scientist named Griffin. He discovers rare chemicals which can make a man invisible. But at the same time, the man can be touched and felt physically. You will find that a famous Hindi film, Mr. India, has a similar plot about a man who manages to make himself invisible. What would you do if you could move around undetected and invisible? Is it your wish? Note down the points. Here I stop for 30 seconds. What would you do if you could move around undetected and invisible? Will it be fun or it will be something serious? Note down your points and later on you can develop this into a paragraph. Would you use your power to be good or get up to some mischief? That also you have to mention. Let us read and find out how Griffin uses the power of invisibility. Does he use it well or does he misuse it? The story begins like this. There were two boys and they were you know surprised at the fresh muddy footprints of a pair of bare feet. They could not see the man. They could only see footprints muddy footprints. What was a barefooted man doing on the steps of a house in the middle of London? And where was the man? They could not see the man. They could only see muddy footprints. So, that means Griffins has already become invisible. As they gazed, a remarkable sight met their eyes. A fresh footmark appeared from nowhere. Further footprints followed one after another descending the steps and progressing down the street. The boys started following. They were fascinated until the muddy impressions became fainter and fainter because those you know mud was becoming less and at last disappeared altogether. The explanation of the mystery was really simple enough. The bewildered boys had been following a scientist who had just discovered how to make the human body transparent. Griffin, the scientist, 
had carried out experiment after experiment to prove that the human body could become invisible. Finally, he swallowed certain rare drugs and his body became as transparent as a sheet of glass. Though it also remained as solid as glass, he became invisible, but if you come near him, you can feel that body, but nobody will be able to see. Now, this brilliant scientist, though he was a very brilliant person, but he was a lawless person. His landlord disliked him and tried to remove him from his house. Griffin was very angry. So, what did he do? In revenge, he set the house on fire. To get away without being seen, he had to remove his clothes. So, now you get the point that he will become invisible only when he removes the clothes. His body will become invisible, but not the clothes. The moment he wears his clothes, people can see that you know somebody is moving about in the clothes. So, he had to remove his clothes and with this he became a homeless wanderer without clothes, without money and quite invisible until he happened to step in some mud and left footprints as he walked. So, therefore, the boys were following the footprints. Scientific breakthroughs and inventions always bring wonder and excitement to the layperson and common man. That is true, we are fascinated. However, the thrill of observing something novel can easily disappear if the invention is misused. Do you agree with me on this or not? I think you agree. Therefore, you know very often it is said that science can be a boon, it can also be a bane. We should never use it in a wrong manner. So, what is Griffin the scientist trying to do in the story? Let us move on. He escaped easily enough from the boys who followed his footprints in London. He escaped, but his adventures were by no means over. He had no money, he had no clothes. Let us see what he does. He had chosen a bad time of the year to wander about. London without clothes. It was midwinter. The air was bitterly cold and he could not do without clothes. Instead of walking about the streets, he decided to slip into a big London store for warmth. Nobody could see him, but at least it was warm. Closing time arrived and as soon as the doors were shut, Griffin was able to give himself pleasure of clothing and feeding himself without regard to expense. He broke open boxes and wrappers and fitted himself out with warm clothes. Soon with shoes, an overcoat and a wide brimming hat, he became a fully dressed and visible person. In the kitchen of the restaurant, he could find meat and coffee and he followed up the meal with sweets and wine taken from the grocery store. Finally, he settled down to sleep on a pile of quilts. If only Griffin had managed to wake up in good time, all might have been well. He kept on sleeping. As it was, he did not wake up until the assistants were already arriving next morning. When he saw a couple of them approaching, he panicked and began to run. They naturally gave a chase. In the end, he was able to escape only by quickly taking off his newly found clothes. He became invisible once again without clothes. So, once more he found himself invisible, but naked in the chill January air must have been very difficult. This time he decided to try the stock of a theatrical company in the hope of finding not only clothes, but also something that would hide the empty space above his shoulders. Now, what is that empty space? See, he has become invisible. No one can see him. His body is like glass. He wears the clothes, so clothes give shape. 
but what does he do with his face? He cannot wear clothes on his face. So, he thinks of a plan. Let us see what is that plan. Shivering with cold, he hurried to Drury Lane, the center of the theater world. He soon found a suitable shop. He made his way invisible upstairs and came out a little later wearing bandages around his forehead. Dark glasses, false nose, big bushy side whiskers and a large hat to escape without being seen. He callously attacked the shopkeeper from behind after which he robbed him of all the money he could find. So, he was a lawless person. This is what we have understood. He might have been a genius to find out something like this that he has become invisible. But what is the use? Plus, he is a lawless person. He is, you know, cheating people. He is, you know, robbing them of their money. Can we discuss a few questions over here? My first question to you is, how did the invisible man first become visible? He does become visible. The invisible man Griffin first became visible after he slipped into a big London store for keeping warm and overslept there while wearing some clothes taken from the store. The clothes made him visible at the shop and when the shop assistants came, uh, he had to run. He had to shed all his clothes and then so that he becomes invisible to them and he is able to escape. Why was he wandering the streets? Why? He was a lawless person. His landlord disliked him and wanted to get rid of him. Griffin got angry and he set the house on fire to escape. And then he removed his clothes and became invisible. After becoming homeless, he began wandering the streets of London. Therefore, he was wandering all over the place. You see, one should be wise enough. He is a scientist. That means he can think. He has knowledge. He can do wonders. But at the same time, one has to be judicious. One has to be wise. One has to be disciplined. So, all these things are very important. Shall we continue with the story? The next part. Now, he wants to leave London. Eager to get away from crowded London, he took a train to the village of Epping, where he booked two rooms at the local inn. The arrival of a stranger at an inn in winter, in any case, was an unusual event. You, you see, in cold countries, generally people do not go out, they stay at home. But it was unusual, a person is coming in winter, he has booked an inn, a stranger of such uncommon appearance and uh, you know, all the people were talking about it. Mrs. Hall, the landlord's wife, made every effort to be friendly. But Griffin had no desire to talk and told her, my reason for coming to Epping is a desire for solitude. I want to be alone, not to be disturbed. Okay? And I am going to do some work, so do not disturb. Besides, an accident has affected my face because he has put bandages to give shape to his face. Satisfied that her guest was an eccentric scientist, and in view of the fact that he had paid her in advance, Mrs. Hall was prepared to excuse his strange habits and irritable temper. But the stolen money did not last long and presently Griffin had to admit that he had no more ready cash. He pretended however that he was expecting a check to arrive at any moment. That is how you know people tell lies. Shortly afterwards, a curious episode occurred. Very early in the morning, a clergyman and his wife were awakened by noises in the study. Creeping downstairs, they heard the chink of money being taken from the clergyman's desk. Without making any noise and with a poker, 
grasped firmly in his hand, the clergyman flung open the door. Surrender! Then to his amazement, he realized that the room was empty. He and his wife looked under the desk, behind the curtains and even up the chimney. There wasn't a soul. There, there was nobody. Yet the desk had been opened and the housekeeping money was missing. Who do you think is there? Your guess is right. It is Griffins only. He is a lawless person. He is stealing. The clergyman kept saying for the rest of the day, extraordinary affair. This is extraordinary. But it was not as extraordinary as the behavior of Mrs. Hall's furniture a little later that morning. The landlord and his wife were up very early and were surprised to see that the scientist door was open. Usually it was shut and locked and he was furious if anyone entered his room. Now this was the opportunity for them to see what is happening in the room. They peeped around the door, saw nobody and decided to investigate. The bed clothes were cold showing that the scientist must have been up for some time and the stranger still the clothes and bandages that he always wore were lying about the room. All of a sudden Mrs. Hall heard a sniff close to the ear. A moment later the hat on the bed, bed post leapt up and dashed itself into her face. Then the bedroom chair became alive springing into the air. It charged straight at her legs. As she and her husband turned away in terror, the extraordinary chair pushed them both out of the room and then appeared to slam and lock the door after them. So that means Griffins was there and he was actually pushing them out of the room and he was not at all concerned. Mrs. Hall almost fell down the stairs in hysterics. She was convinced that the room was haunted by spirits and that the stranger had somehow caused these to enter into their furniture. My poor mother used to sit in that chair, she moaned. And now they were feeling very upset. The feeling among the neighbors was that the trouble was caused by witchcraft. They had no idea that Griffins was invisible. So they were all thinking about ghosts and witchcraft. But witchcraft or not, what news of the burglary at the clergyman's home became known? The strange scientist was strongly suspected of having had a hand in it. Suspicion grew even stronger when he suddenly produced some ready cash, though he had admitted not long before that he had no money. The village constable was secretly sent for. Instead of waiting for the constable, uh, Mrs. Hall went to the scientist who had somehow mysteriously appeared from his empty bedroom. I want to know what you have been doing to my chair upstairs, she demanded. And I want to know how it is you came out of an empty room and how you entered a locked room. So she was asking very valid questions. The scientist was very quick tempered and he became furious. He shouted, I will show you, he said. And suddenly he threw off bandages, whiskers, spectacles and even nose. It took him a minute to do that. Everybody standing over there were horrified. Headless man. Mr. Jeffers, the constable now arrived and was quiet, surprised to find that he had to arrest a man without a head. But Jeffers was not easily prevented from doing his duty. If a magistrate's warrant ordered a person's arrest, then the person had to be arrested with or without head. So there followed a remarkable scene as the policeman tried to get hold of a man who was becoming more and more invisible as he threw off one garment after the another. Finally, a shirt flew into the air and the constable found himself struggling with someone he could not see at all. Some people tried to help him but found nothing. 
they were hit by blows and these blows were coming from nowhere. In the end, Jeffers was knocked unconscious as he made a last attempt to hold on to the unseen scientist. There were nervous, excited cries of hold him, but this was easier said than done. Griffin had shaken himself free and no one knew where to lay hands on him. That is it. So, he escaped once again. Shall we discuss a few questions? Why does Mrs. Hall find the scientist eccentric? Through and through the story we are told that he behaved in a funny manner. Why he did not have money? Therefore, he had to cheat. Therefore, he had to steal. And he did not want to talk to anyone. Mrs. Hall found the scientist eccentric because of his strange appearance. That is also one of the reasons. He was wearing bandages around his forehead, dark glasses, a false nose, big bushy side whiskers and a large hat. Also when she tried to be friendly with him, he rebuffed her by saying that he has come there for solitude and did not wish to be disturbed while he worked. What curious episode occurs in the study? Study of clergyman. Clergyman and his wife were awakened by the noises coming from their study. So, when they heard the noises of coins, they went over there. However, when they entered the study, they did not find anyone over there and that was really curious. I have a few more questions for you to think and comment. Griffin was rather a lawless person. What do you think? Comment on this. Right from the beginning, we are told in the story that he was a lawless person. He did not hesitate to harm anyone. First of all, he set his landlord's house on fire because the landlord tried to make him leave. Then his robberies at shops Later in the village, all these indicate that he was a lawbreaker. And he went into the clergyman's study to steal money. When he encountered the landlady of the inn, he threw a chair at her and her husband. Lawless persons like Griffin never think about the safety and well-being of others. They are only concerned about themselves. So, he was surely a lawless person and the whole story is about that. My next question for you to think and comment is, how would you assess Griffin as a scientist? He was a great scientist, there is no doubt about it, isn't it? He has made himself invisible. He must have been a brilliant scientist. He has discovered how to make himself invisible, but he seems to enjoy the feeling of power, which he gets out of misusing his invisibility. A true scientist should always make discoveries for the larger benefit of society and not for his own benefit. And this is where he has gone wrong. He was using his skill, knowledge, talent to cheat people. Let us discuss a few more questions that will help us unfold the text better because we must relate the text to the world outside. Hmm? Would you like to become invisible? Would you? What advantages and disadvantages do you foresee if you did? Now, this is for you to write. Note down the points, the advantages and disadvantages. Now, keep in mind that scientific discoveries are for social benefit and not to harm anyone. Keep this thing in mind and then write your answer. And once you have written your answer, you please share it with your friends. Exchange because you will have 
variety of answers share it with your teacher and you can share with us also right my second question to you is are there forces around us that are invisible you are students of science also you know it for example magnetism are there aspects of matter that are invisible or not visible to the naked eye right please pay attention or not visible to the naked eye there can be many examples sound is invisible air is invisible the atoms and molecules in matter are so small that they are not visible to the naked eye all forces are invisible gravitational electrostatic magnetic it is their impact that is visible right you can very well connect this with science you can develop the answer further by giving examples talk to your teacher discuss all these things you see learning cuts across the curriculum let us look at the next question what would the world be like if you could see such forces or such aspects of matter while the idea of seeing invisible things can be very exciting their visibility could create many problems let the world be as it is we might be overwhelmed on seeing everything all at once next question what makes glass or water transparent what is the scientific explanation for this do you think it would be scientifically possible for a man to become invisible or transparent keep in mind that writers of science fiction have often turned out to be prophetic in their imagination the fact that light can pass through glass or water makes them transparent when light falls on an object the reflected light from that object makes it visible to us if some device can be made which can prevent reflection of light from the human body then the human body can be made visible too the theme of invisibility has inspired many fairy tales with happy endings stories of mischief and laughter as well as serious commentary on human nature and greed a few iconic science fiction books include the invisible man by hg wells as far as the human eye can see by isaac asimov it happened tomorrow an anthology edited by the marathi writer and nuclear biologist bal fondke I would like to leave you with some food for thought. The thinker Burton Russell once wrote in Nature and Origin of Scientific Method, "Power without wisdom is dangerous." And what our age needs is a wisdom even more than knowledge. Given wisdom, the power conferred by science can give a new degree of well-being to all mankind without wisdom it can bring only destruction is it true for the story knowledge without wisdom brings destruction that is what happened in the story some writing task for you write an essay on the theme an ethical scientist is a good scientist right I repeat an ethical scientist is a good scientist. I think that is what all the great scientists have told us. You research about it and then write the essay. Second task for writing is research and identify three recent inventions that have benefited society. Draw posters showcasing each invention and its usage. you just have to make the poster study about it give a title write the poster what are it, its advantages and how it can benefit mankind also include a line about their inventor now third task for you is 
identify any woman scientist, woman scientist whose work inspires you. Write a short biography of her education, work and impact on society in about 250 words. Next task is, if you could invent something, do you wish to invent something? Of course we can. What would it be and why? Share your ideas with your classmates and teacher. Before writing, do research. Generate ideas. You may have to discuss with your science teachers. You may ha have to refer to encyclopedia. Do that. Read about inventions. Once it is ready, then start writing. And first draft is never the final draft. You may edit, you may revise and then make the final draft. With this, we have come to the end of this session. Happy reading. Thank you.